All right, welcome to lab. Good afternoon. So this is cervical HVLA part two. All right, so we're going to do the atypical cervicals today. That's OA and AA. So one of these is arguably the hardest thing to do with HVLA, and the other is arguably the easiest. All right, so that being said, how do you get a good correction with HVLA? How do you do it? Setup, right? You have to have a good setup. How do you get a good setup? Good diagnosis. All right, so you have to have a good diagnosis. Um, and one of the things that's really important for understanding how to get a good diagnosis is understanding the anatomy that's involved, right? Um, one of the things I, I like to tell students all the time is that the, um, the easiest way to diagnose what you're trying to diagnose is to diagnose what you're trying to diagnose. All right, and so what that means is you want to limit your force, limit your um, your analysis to the actual segment that you're trying to diagnose. So be careful that you're not moving things extraneously. So part of that is understanding um, why things move the way that they do. Okay, so in the OA, the occiput moving on the atlas. Side bending and rotation are coupled, right, such that they move to the same side or opposite? Opposite. Why is that? Huh? Wah, wah. Anatomy, right? Anatomy, anatomy, anatomy. It's all you ever need or want is anatomy, right? Um, so the shape of the joint determines what it's able to do. So it's the bony anatomy that determines the direction that the OA is going to move. All right. So what is the bony anatomy of the OA? How are the articular facets, the superior articular facets of C1 oriented? How are they oriented? If we look at them from posterior to anterior, do they go from lateral to medial or medial to lateral? They're like that, so what does that mean? Does it go lateral to medial as you go from posterior to anterior, right? Because they diverge anteriorly or they converge anteriorly? Converge, right? They point towards each other in the front, right? They make a little wedge pointed towards the anterior, okay? So also from posterior to anterior, do they go inferior or do they go more superior? Are they tipped a little down in the front, or are they tipped a little up in the front? All right, 50-50, not so bad, okay. Bring a quarter to the test, it will help. You can flip it. So <laughs> they're inferior on the anterior surface, okay? So they dip down just a little bit. And then they're also concave or convex? They're concave, right? They're like little spoons or little soup bowls, as somebody said in a previous lab session, right? So that shape is going to determine what the occipital condyles can do when they ride along in those articular surfaces, okay? So take a look at these, the models. We've got the skeletons. We have a few left in here. Um, so take a look and remember how those joints are shaped because that determines the motion available there, okay? so. Let's evaluate our OA, okay? So we've got our articular facets, and we, we know what they look like, right? So if we have our right occipital condyle, and it's sitting in the facet, and I push that occipital condyle anteriorly, is that going to create flexion or extension? Extension, exactly. It's going to create extension, okay? So as that condyle is moving forward, okay, it's also moving more medially on the right side. So does that give me rightward rotation or leftward rotation? What is that? Leftward rotation, okay? And so by my coupled motion, I know that that gives me rightward side bending, right? So if I push that 
occipital condyle on the right side, if I push that anteriorly, it's going to give me extension, leftward rotation, and rightward side bending. Okay? So now go back to neutral in your brain. And now we're going to draw that condyle on the right side. We're going to draw, draw it posteriorly. Okay? Is that giving me flexion or extension? Flexion. Okay? And is that giving me rightward rotation or leftward rotation? Rightward rotation. And so by coupled motion, I get leftward side bending. Okay? So by evaluating the motion available at the right condyle, I can see if it prefers to go into extension, left rotation, and right side bending, or does it prefer to go into flexion, right rotation, and left side bending. Okay? So then I'm going to test the left side. So I'm going to push the left side condyle anteriorly. Where is that going to go? Extension, rightward rotation, and left side bending. Got it? Okay. So we go back to neutral, and now we're going to bring that left condyle posterior. That's going to give me flexion, leftward rotation, rightward side bending. Okay? Does that make sense? So what did I just do? I just diagnosed the OA. I just assessed everything the OA can do. It can only do four things. Okay? So I can go anterior with my right condyle, so that's going to give me extension, rightward side bending, leftward rotation. Okay? I can go posterior on the right side, and that's going to give me flexion and rightward rotation, leftward side bending. I can go forward on the left side, which gives me extension, rightward side bending, and leftward rotation. And I can go posterior on that left side, which gives me flexion, leftward side bending, and rightward rotation. Does that make sense? So those are the only things you can do. So this is what you evaluate. Cool? Come on up, volunteer. So we're going to do it on a live person. Lie on your back, please. Thank you. So to do those things, what I want to do is I want to contact the occiput kind of halfway between the midline of the occiput and the occipital mastoid suture, okay? So here's the occipital mastoid suture. I don't want to be that lateral. Midline's way back there. That's not so good. So somewhere about in the middle, okay? As low down about on the occiput as I can touch. And I'm going to take that in the same direction as my articular facet, okay? So I'm going to basically be poking towards the opposite side of her chin. All right, so I'm going to test my left condyle. So if I poke towards the left side of her chin, sorry, the right side of her chin, whatever side this is, right side. So I poke towards the right side of her chin, but I'm testing my left condyle. What did I just put her into? Extension, rotated right, side bent left. So I'll ex exaggerate it for the camera. So that's what it looks like, yeah? Okay. Then I'm going to assess posterior glide of that condyle. So I pull back. So I'm going to hook my fingers around that occiput, and I'm going to pull it back. So now that gives me flexion, leftward rotation, rightward side bending, yeah? Okay. Then I go back to neutral, check the right side. So I'm going to push forward into a barrier. Oh, no, into... <laughs> Uh, extension, rightward side bending, left rotation, okay? And then I pull back on that same condyle, and I get flexion, leftward side bending, rightward rotation, okay? So I'm looking for where it's easiest, okay? Where does she like to be? And for her, her position of ease is actually the first one we did. So she likes to be extended, side bent to the left, and rotated to the right, okay? So I'm just doing this. So if that's the case, and I'm treating her with HVLA, where am I going to put her to set her up? So this is what she likes. Where am I going to go? Huh? Who? What, what? The opposite, right? So if her left condyle is anterior, I'm just going to pull it posterior, okay? So when I pull her posterior, so right now I push her anterior, and she is extended, side bent left, rotated right. So if I pull backwards on that same condyle, I get flexion, side bending to the right, rotation to the left. That's it. Okay? 
So with the OA, we are going to treat in all three planes, okay? So I put her into her barrier in all three planes. Remember with the typicals, we only cared about rotation or translation, all right? But for this, I want all three planes. Now, this is not a really super convenient way to put any force in with HVLA, right? So I have to do something different with my hands, and I'll show you what that is. So I want to contact with my MCP on the side of her rotational component. So she was rotated to the right. So I'm going to contact on that same spot on the occiput that I use for diagnosis. Okay, so I contact there. I'm going to pronate my hand. Let me do it on the other side. We'll pretend your, your diagnosis is a backwards one. Okay, so let's see. We'll pretend that that's your diagnosis. Okay, just so we can see it on the camera. So I'm going to contact on that occiput. I'm going to pronate my hand so I can get my thumb pointed up towards her eye. Okay, if she was extended, I want to flex her. So I'm just going to use my right hand now and I'm going to draw back to try to glide that condyle posterior. So that's going to put her into flexion. It's going to put her into side bending left and rotation right. Okay, so this is the setup if her diagnosis was extension, side bending right, rotation left. Does that make sense? That's her, that's her setup. So a couple of things to make this work better. Number one, I want to keep my hand pronated so I can keep that uh, vector towards her eye. But I want to add some axial traction, all right? I want to lift her occiput up off of her cervical spine, okay? So I'm pulling backwards for me, but it's superior for her, okay? So I want to keep that side bending. For her, I want to keep that flexion. And then I'm going to do pure rotation, okay? But you'll notice my body is going to move with the side bending. So this is neutral. I'm, my body moves with her side bending. Okay? And then it's pure rotation. So I get right there and I just rotate like that. Okay? That's it. And then I reassess. Right? So I go back and I check and see did I do any good. So that's if she had an extended lesion. Right? I put her into flexion. So if she had a flex lesion, so she prefers flexion. So let's say... She likes this one. So that's flexed. It's side bent to the left, rotated to the right. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to take my uh, MCP on the side of the rotation. Now I'm going to push her up into extension. Side bending to the left. I'm so sorry, side bending to the right, rotation to the left. So I'm right there. Okay. Axial traction, that will make a big difference. And then pure rotation. I recommend that you stand up to do it even though I was sitting down. You should stand up. Um, arguably, this is the most difficult, so a couple things to make it easier. Number one, cervical soft tissue, myofascial release, suboccipital release. That's a great one. Get those muscles that are spanning that OA calm down and happy so they won't be in your way. Okay? You can also do a little muscle energy to warm that area up before you thrust. Okay, so that will also help you get into that perfect little barrier. Your setup has to be a lot more precise because of Friet's third law, right? We're going into all three barriers, so there's not a lot of wiggle room. You got to be right where you are. Um, and then the last thing that you can do to help give yourself a little bit of room is treat the, the typical cervicals. So get the typical cervicals done and then do OA. Okay, does that make sense? So one thing I didn't, I failed to mention is how you can confirm your diagnosis. So we did the diagnosis by using the X, okay? Just do the little X, right? The other way to do it, you have to, this is where I, why I say, if you're diagnosing a segment, diagnose that segment, okay? You got to remember your axis of rotation for flexion and extension is through the external auditory meatus. That's your axis. That's where OA lives, okay? So, if I want to flex at the OA, I'm going to draw both of those condyles posterior. And I'm going to flex at the OA. If I do this, I am flexing at C7. I'm not flexing at OA. So I'm no longer evaluating OA. Okay? I want to just evaluate OA. So I'm going to flex right through her aut auditory meatus right there. That's it. That's as much as I get. All right? Likewise, if I go into extension, same thing. I just want to go to there's where her OA stops. I can keep extending her spine, but I'm not extending OA anymore, right? I just want to move it out OA right there. And then from there, I can use translation. 
So I translate her to the left, and that's just like side bending to the right, which gives me rotation to the left, okay? Then I can translate her to the right, which is just like side bending left and rotation to the right, okay? And then I can put her back into flexion and test that same thing. So I can use that if I'm not 100% sure with my diagnosis using the X factor there, okay? So I would suggest that you get proficient at both of those because some people, because of their arrangement, their muscle tension, their, their cervical dysfunction, whatever, one way is going to be easier and more obvious to you than the other, but it's not going to be the same for every person. So get, get used to doing both of those. Okay, questions on setup, diagnosis, or treatment? Okay, any groups have an odd number? Uh, okay, so you and Dr. Ambler, you guys can figure it out. And um, go ahead, diagnose your partner, have your table trainer confirm it, treat the OA with HVLA.
All right, I need a body. You want to be a body again? All right. That's fine. Come on up. Okay, so one thing I think I forgot to mention after doing this four times, you know, you kind of forget what you say and what you don't. So um, for the purposes of my example, she is flexed. This is OA again. She's flexed, side bent to the right, rotated left. Okay? So my setup is going to be extension, side bending to the left, rotation to the right. Yeah? So it's a pure rotation. But what if I accidentally translate her to the right? Because remember, this is easier to do than this. So what if I accidentally translate her that way? Is that going to augment my treatment, or is it going to detract from my treatment? What do you think? Huh? It's going to augment it? Why? So I'm going through the side bending barrier, exactly. So if I translate her to the right, that's actually putting her into her barrier because her barrier is side bending to the left. So this one, when you add that tiny bit of translation, it helps you to stay in that barrier. We don't want to treat with pure translation. We want to treat with rotation. But if you augment it with just a little bit of translation, that's okay. All right, it's not going to hurt anything. It's only going to help. So that's why that's one nice thing about the OA. Like if I forget and do translation when I meant to do rotation, most likely it's still going to go. Okay, so that's the one saving grace. Okay, so now let's do AA. Arguably the easiest one. All right. So how do we diagnose AA? Yeah, so we lock out the lower cervicals by flexing, right? So we flex up to about 45 degrees. Okay, but what's more important than that is if you can put your fingers right in the midline, right underneath that occiput, and you want to feel for C1 to kind of fall back into your hand. So it'll get just a little bit more tension there. So if I go right to here, no tension. If I go to there, now I feel it. So that C1 has dropped back into my hand. So now I know I'm locked out. So now I'm just going to rotate. Rotation right. Rotation left. Okay, so she prefers rotation left. So how do I treat it? Just rotation right. It's really easy. I don't have to worry about anything else. So my hand placement is I'm going to use that MCP on the side of her rotation. Um, just right where I contacted for the OA. Remember where that was? I'm just going to slip inferiorly, just barely off of the occiput. Okay, so that, that posterior component, that superior articular facet of C1 is a little bitty. Okay, there's not a lot of substance there. It's tiny. So you may not actually feel it, but that's what you're shooting for. Okay, so I want to be just off of the occiput on that articular pillar of C1, if such a thing exists, right? I want to make sure that I'm flexed up to where I feel that C1 fall back into my hand. And then it's just pure rotation. I go all the way over to the barrier and then just augment it, just like that. That's all. And then go back end. Reassess, right? I want to reassess again and make sure I did some good stuff, okay? So often what I will do when I'm assessing or reassessing the AA, in addition to feeling posteriorly, I will put my thumbs on those transverse processes, so right behind the earlobe, right? I'll get on the transverse process and follow that motion along as I'm feeling for rotation, okay? Sounds good. Questions on treating AA with HVLA? All right, go for it. And when you're done with this, you are done with lab for the first year of OPP.